What's up, everybody? Welcome to Teenager Tuesday. Ba -ba -da -ba. That's John Cena, not Teenager Tuesday. Copyright. Hey, welcome back to the Culture Update. Those are some of, I know, some of y'all's favorite episodes where we talk about a little bit about culture. I'm here with none other than Nate McDeuce Stuckey. Please don't call me that. Pastor but, Nate from from Prosper, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. Glad to be here. Excited to hang out with uh, y'all on Teenager Tuesday. Let's do this thing. Let's go. I love me some Teenager Tuesday. Okay, we've done this before on Culture Update. Uh, we're gonna we pretty much have two things we're gonna be doing. We got a little bit of slang for you. Some of you guys are like, "What are my students even saying?" Yeah. Um, we're we're gonna talk through some of those things. It's actually a little bit of a fun game. So see how many of these you guys can get and then after that we're going to be talking about students and politics um and and how that functions at their school but also kind of what are their thoughts on it so um let's start with the slang of the week welcome to slang of the week here we go <laughs> <laughs> we got one two three four five six seven of these Nate, uh oh shoot how many do you think you can get as a student pastor uh i think i can get five Oh, you boofed. <laughs> Speaking of boofed, first word, boofed. What do uh, you know about boofed? Like, like bad? I can use it in a sentence. You please use it in a sentence. Boy boofed. <laughs> 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 that, you know? that helped me a ton, dude. Okay. Uh, language of origin or no. English. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. I mean, so like, like bad. Like that boy's like like bad. Okay, yeah, yeah. Or like that test was boofed. Like, bro, I, it's whack. I messed up. It's okay. terrible. That's bad. Okay, boofed. yeah. Boofed. Like, you get a bad chicken sandwich from Chick-fil-A, you're like, ooh, that's boofed. Okay. Boy boofed. <laughs> boy, that boy okay. boofed. Okay. You got that one. I'll give you that one. All right. Next one. These next couple should be pretty easy. Okay. I'm dead. I'm dead. Like, if somebody, uh, if somebody says something dumb or funny you're like i'm dead i'm like, dead like oh like like i guess i don't even know exactly what it means but that's like the context you would use it yeah what would you say that means though you're like, like i'm dead like i'm i'm done like that's too much yeah too much i'm done it's yeah, yeah. too funny okay. i can't even react to it that's how funny it is gotcha like i i'm dead i went up to heaven that's how funny it is i'm dead i got you okay that one i know i know that one all right very similar but a little different go off Go off, like kill it, like go crush it. You might hear this in a sermon, like, right? Pastor Nate's preaching, like, like go off, Pastor Nate. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's like that you're on mean fire, you're stage. feeling it, right? Not like leave. That's boofed. That's boofed. <laughs> like Pastor Nate, that's boofed. And then you. you so go if your student says go off, don't be offended. But if they <laughs> yeah. say you boofed, hey, that's bad. That's not good. You got to fix it. All right, next we got a couple that I think are a little confusing. Tope. Can we use that in a sentence? <laughs> yeah. Yo, please. boy, tope. <laughs> <laughs> boy tope man that thing <laughs> that that show is tope it's the same sentence every time you just say <laughs> boy and then whatever you're like boy tope <laughs> boy boof i have no idea what that means bro tope i heard this once this semester it is it's a it's a mix of tights and dope okay so it's good tope man that boy tope, <laughs> boy tope. mama mama tope okay uh, so if someone says you're taupe, bro, that's good. That's tight. That's tight. And dope. <laughs> I'm dead. All right. Let's go to this one. Boys down bad. Down bad. Like, uh, this would be like about a girl or something. Uh, it could like, be. be like, man, he's down bad. He's like, down like, bad, like, uh, she, He got broken, but he's sad. Yeah, sad. He's low. Like, yeah. he's not yeah, he's Or not if doing you're, like, good. taking L's all the time. Yeah. Damn, I'm down bad, man. Boys down bad. Yeah. I'm I bad, got man. that one. That's a good one. Okay. So you're what? You got, you got, you got almost all of them. One, two, three, four. I got four to five. Last one. Sweaty boy. What you know about that? He a sweat. Okay. You mean he was in a sentence? Yeah. Boy a sweat. <laughs> boy a sweaty boy. Oh my gosh, he's a sweaty boy. Uh, parents, this does not mean uh, that they're they're hot and they've gotten sweaty. That's not what it means. That does not. You would think it would, but yeah. that's not what yeah. it means. It's not what it means. Uh, I, I do know this one. Uh, I occasionally uh, am around gamers, so I've Gamer heard this. Uh, someone is sweaty or they're sweat. It's like they're a tryhard. Yes. Like, like they're like... Uh, they play all day. That's like all they do is like that. Man, he's sweaty. Uh, you, you're saying you're you're sweaty when it comes to gaming? No, nah, man. I'm, I'm, I'm not. But I know people that are. Yeah, they yeah. try hard. I was like that way in PE. They would call me a sweaty boy because I, I would try too hard. <laughs> try way too hard. Okay. Oh, I want to know good. how you guys did. 
Um, if there's a way to leave a comment, I don't know if there is, <laughs> leave a comment. <laughs> if there's not, just say it out loud in your car when you're listening to this. That's good. Um, That's helpful stuff right there, man. Even for me. Thank you. Dude, uh, we didn't boof at all. And uh, I'm dead. Go off. <laughs> That's dope. <laughs> Okay, here we go. We're going to get to the main topic here. Uh, this won't take us too long, uh, but I want to talk about this because this is something that has happened recently that I've seen in students uh, as their pastor. Uh, some of this conversation has come up of um, students in politics, students and politics. Uh, what does that look like? And kind of the idea of like students in politics, but also with big issues. So obviously we ha we've had a shooting happen uh, all, I mean, a lot happened recently. We've had, we had one happen in Allen. And I've seen some of this like, students how they react and relate to politics and so i, I took this I, I was kind of looking online i like when what what are students opinions and harvard polls had this stat i love this it's 40 46 percent of high schoolers say they care about politics okay which i thought was relatively low i was like man that low. seems low i feel like people care more yeah in, in my opinion but i guess that's 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 how they're feeling um but then it says this, 91% say they have, a, an, have an opinion on social issues. Wow. Which is a very interesting yeah. spot to be, I it's think. It's a big gap, yeah. So how do, you have 46% that say, I care about politics, but then 91% say, I care about big topics, but not necessarily politics. Right, so there's, they have opinions about the things going on, uh, but they, right. they're they not immediately drawn to politics. Right. So that's so fascinating. And so let, let, let me just ask you this, what, what does that mean? Like what what how what does that mean for our students today? How how do we interact with them when it comes to politics? And how do we maybe if we want them to be in, more involved, how do we do that? How do we have those conversations? Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing you see from that is is ninety one percent have opinions, and so if they have opinions, they're thinking about these things, they're gathering those opinions from somewhere. Yeah, uh, and even if they're not maybe going to think about it in terms of who the next president's going to be, they are thinking about it. They're engaging with these things. So I think it, that just tells us like conversations have to be had like these are things we have to talk to our students about yeah because if we don't talk to them about it like someone will someone will like they're going to get information from somewhere because they they have opinions and we just want to do our part to make sure we're helping contribute to what those are and teaching yeah i think it's anything as a parent you want to be the first voice they hear on all these topics on sex on politics like because if like you said if you if if you're not the person they're hearing it from they are hearing it from somebody right i had a student that that was quoting this guy from youtube and I don't even know if he even knew what he was saying, but he was just copying what this guy was what this what this guy was saying about politics. Right. And I was like, "Where did you hear that?" And he he was he 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 said he heard it from this guy on YouTube. And I think, man, we need to be careful about where what what information is going in our students' head, especially when it comes to politics. Yeah. Um, but also, if, if you care about politics as a parent, teach your teach your students, and don't maybe don't force it on them, but teach them what it looks like to relate with politics well. Yeah, and even like if. Like for a first step, just start by asking questions. Like, hey, what do you think about this? Like, yeah. uh, do you have an opinion when it comes to these issues? I know these are prevalent. Uh, have you heard anything about this? What are your thoughts on this? And at least get a starting point there, because because you might think they have no idea, and really they've been learning from YouTube or friends yeah. or other things, all these kind of things. So uh, I think it's at least worth getting a gauge on where they're at. If ninety one percent say that's something that they have opinions about. Yeah, I think that's really good. And like, just I guess listen, listen to your students, hear them out. Don't just force whatever opinion you have actually hear their heart on it um I, I would say this i'm not i wouldn't say i'm super political as a person my dad is mm. and this is something that might relate to you as a parent of you know part of what forced me not to be as political is because i just saw the division that was caused not only in my dad but in the po in politics in general just how much hurt and pain there is in that separation yeah and i was like man i just i care about people i care about the issues but i also care about people and i don't want to hurt anybody by trying to figure stuff out politically. Yeah, I think that that's a great point. I mean, that that would certainly make sense as to how there's like 40% are interested in politics, 91% care about it. There's something about what they see in politics that's off-putting to them. Yeah. Uh, and, and I would guess that that has to do with the way things are discussed and the, uh, how quickly that can escalate into fights or arguments or negative or those kind of things. So I think it is worth like asking the question, what when the topic of politics come up, like, what am I showing my kids? Right. Am I showing them division? Am I showing them uh, that I'm going to quickly get defensive and argumentative? Or am I able to sit and have a, a good, honest conversation about things uh, without letting that make me angry or those <laughs> kind of things and pushing them away from it? For sure. I think that's super solid. I want to get into this question before we're done. Um, but I've had a lot of parents ask me about this, about how, where, kind of where does this lie biblically? 
Like, how mm. does politics relate to the Bible? And the Bible does talk about politics. Um, I had a friend tell me, uh, this is when uh, gay marriage was legalized, and just a lot of Christians were frustrated uh, verbally out loud on Facebook, on all these platforms. And he, he had posted this post that was like, um, pretty much, Jesus didn't come to change Rome. He came to change the world. Yeah. To save the world. And I, I love that statement. And I do think we should care about politics. There's, we're going to read some, there's some scripture we're going to read, but man, I think overwhelmingly like, man, that's your priority. That's right. your, Jesus changing people's hearts, eternal, like you're a citizen of heaven first. Right. Uh, before politics. And if you are politically putting po politics above people, then something's wrong. Yeah. I mean, I, it does the first thing that popped in my head when you ask about the Bible is, they're, they're coming to Jesus. They expected him to be uh, more of a political figure than he was because they thought he would come to overthrow the government. And he was really focused on establishing a new government in the kingdom of heaven. Like, it really not the point. And they're like, what do we do with these taxes? He's like, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. You know, like Jesus, uh, I'm not saying he didn't care about those things, but there's no doubt his first priority was the kingdom, uh, heaven, the future, those kind of things rather than the current political state. So I think that's that's great. Yeah. Um, some scriptures to kind of read here. Titus 3, 9. Uh, but avoid foolish controversies, genealogies, decision, dissensions, and quarrels about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. Some di some divisions that were happening in the, in, uh, the new church uh, with politics, with things happening in their life. And this is simply saying, hey, like, don't, don't get caught up in earthly things that overall don't profit heavenly, heavenly mm. things. Uh, like, obviously, there's some stances, there's, you know, vote. if you have stances, vote, like, be a part of that. But yeah. don't let your quarrels about laws come between you and loving people and you and making a heavenly impact in somebody's life. Yeah, I think that's that's great. It, it kind of goes along with this one in First Peter. Uh, this is chapter 2, verse 17, where the first thing he says is honor everyone. Uh, so we should care about how we treat people. Like, yeah. and, and then he goes on to say, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. Um, it, it was a push toward loving people first and, and even praying for those politically who you might not agree with or uh, might see differently. Like we should care about them as people with souls who need to know Jesus, not just like see them as enemies to us because they disagree with us politically. Yeah. And then you even see, I don't, I can't remember the verse off the top of my head, but the, the, the Pharisees were trying to trick Jesus into, into messing up and they had asked him about, you know, what to do with taxes. And he was like, he kind of was like, look at the face on the, on the coin. Who's, whose face is on it? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, tax to Caesar then. Mm -hmm. Like that's what you do. You need to, you need to honor that. Yeah. And I think that's just a great place to be. I, you know, obviously there's so many divisions and your students are going to feel these divisions. Like he says, they have opinions about big topics. Right. They care. Um, but it's like, how do we, how do we change that caring into doing, doing it right yeah. compared to doing it wrong and, and, and potentially creating a divide, not only in your family, maybe, but also with them and other people that, that can really hurt and affect other people. Yeah. And I think it's worth just saying, like in terms of politics, like this verse has been on my mind a lot lately, but I think it's relevant here because it's really relevant in every topic, but Jesus is clear that there's like a wide road that everybody goes down uh, and that is not the right way. Uh, and then there's a narrow road that very few people find and that's the right way. Yeah. And I think even when it comes to like how I look at the political landscape uh, of people that are following Jesus, like most of the time people are yelling at each other, screaming at each other, these kind of things. Like we don't want to get pulled down that road. Like we want to stay on our own road and show our students, hey, there's a right way to go about these things where we can still love people, care about them and have really good, honest conversations so that uh, we can have opinions and can vote and can care about what's going on in our world, but not let those things pull us into things that are far from God. I love it. Uh, so yeah, I, I think just be aware of what your students are watching. Kind of quick topics. Be aware of what your students are watching. Be the person that has those conversations with them politically, setting the setting the standard, but like also living that out in your life. Yeah. Like don't be don't be like hey don't be like that, but then do it on Facebook. Right, right, right. Actually live it out. But That's man, good. making heaven making heaven being a citizen of heaven first is, is priority. So That's huge. I think all those are good. Uh, man, we, thank you guys so much for listening to this. Uh, we'll definitely do some more culture updates here in the future. Uh, man, we didn't boof. It was tone. <laughs> it was and tone, we, bro. we went off, man. So uh, thank you guys so much. Remember, you are not alone. You've got this. God is with you. And so are we. We'll catch you next time.